the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Rain isn't the only thing that can ruin a summer vacation. Worry is another. Worry about the financial future of your family. Well, why not slip some of that burden onto the broad shoulders of the Equitable Life Assurance Society? The Equitable Shoulders have the combined broadness of nearly four million members who have joined forces to protect one another. For the peace of mind that only well-planned life insurance can give, see your Equitable Society representative. He'll arrange to give you a lifelong vacation from worry. Tonight's FBI file, The Ambitious Widow. There have been many wise and practical suggestions offered to your FBI and to every other law enforcement agency on methods of curbing the current serious crime wave. Most of those suggestions had merit. But of them all, only one was an absolute preventative. That one was eternal vigilance. Law-abiding citizens have a tendency to forget that crime, like many other things, runs in cycles. Let one crime seem to be successful, and there will be a series of such crimes. Then, because the gap has been filled, those crimes cease and another type will begin. But there's no way of knowing which new trend will begin. And that is why your FBI tells you that there's only one way for you, the citizen, to help fight the crime wave. That way, to repeat, is eternal vigilance. Tonight's FBI file opens on a rainy day in a quiet cemetery near a large Midwestern town. Two of the mourners are talking as in the background a solemn prayer is being intoned as the casket is about to be lowered. For as much as has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence... Poor Lou. Yeah. The soul of our you know, Hank, I still can't believe he's dead. Yeah, I sure went quick. I saw him the day before he died. He never looked healthier to me. Uh-huh. He was a nice guy. I liked working for him. Yeah, Lou was okay. Yeah, one good thing about it, he went out legitimate. No guns or nothing. I wonder who'll take over now. Hank, Hank, that ain't no way to talk. Why not? Lou ain't even buried yet. He's dead, ain't he? I know, but... I was thinking... I've been working with Lou for better than ten years. I'm the logical guy to step in. Hank, let's talk about it later. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Amen. 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 Well, let's go over and see Nan. Okay. Hello, Nan. Hello, Hank. Ted? We, uh... We want to tell you how sorry we are. Yeah. Thank you. If there's anything we can do, just say the word. You're very sweet. You still going to live at the hotel? No, I bought a boat. Are you going to live on it? Yes. Hey, that's a good idea. You can get away for a while. Help you forget. I don't plan to go away. Where is the boat? Tied up at the foot of 14th Street. You going to keep it there? Yes. What for? Hank, Hank, lay off the question. It's all right, Ted. I'm keeping the boat at 14th Street, Hank, for a very good reason. So many piers near there to steal from. Hey, Hank. 
bank. There's a lot of boats tied up here. It's a public dock. Anybody can come in. Well, how do you tell which one is Anne's? Ted, she told me the name. It's the Dolphin. And there it is. Where? That black job down at the end, see? Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a big boat. Yeah. Hey, I don't see Nan. We'll hail her. Oh, hi there. Anybody aboard? Hey, there she is. Jump aboard, boy. Okay. Okay. Hi, Nan. Hello. It's so nice of you to come down to see me. As soon as we got the word you were looking for us, we came right over. It's quite a boat. Well, I think it should be good to work with. You know, when Lou and I were first married, we spent our honeymoon on a cruiser like this. Oh? We stole enough to make us rich. Stole what? Stuff off piers. Uh, Nan. Yes? Is that what you uh, plan to do again? Yes. That's kind of tough for a dame, isn't it? Well, I'm really depending on Lou's friends to carry me through. Is that why you're sent for us? Yes. You're the last two boys on my list. I've talked to all the others. They're all coming along with me. You uh, got definite plans for action? Yes. Uh, would you care to join us? Okay. Good. How about you, Ted? Well, anything you say is good enough for me. Oh, fine. Come on down to the cabin, then. I'll tell you about our first job. Uh, when is it? Tonight. Hmm. Please cut the motors. Right. We'll drift in just right. Hey, look at those crates of silk. We should be able to load all of them onto the boat in ten minutes. What about the uh, watchman? We always stay at the front. You case this thing pretty good. Lou always said it pays to be careful. Hey, uh, how much is that silk worth, man? It ought to be about $30,000 in that load. That much? Surely. Silk's back on the market, but it's still difficult to get. Here we are. Tie us up, Hank. Yeah. Ted, you and the boys start working. All right. Okay, boys, up you go. Right. Wait a minute. Duck, you guys. What is it? Someone is coming down the pier. Can you handle this, Hank? Sure, sure. Hey, what's going on here? What are you doing in that boat? Well, uh, I'll tell you, mister. We sprang a leak, and it looks like this pier... Okay, let's finish loading and get out of here. The next morning in the field office of your FBI, Special Agent Jim Taylor enters his office to find Elliot Sheridan waiting for him. Well, uh, hello, Elliot. Hi, Jim. You look like you've done a hard day's work. I have. I've been climbing all over Pier 27. Uh, I was hoping you'd come into the office before you went out there. Oh, why? Well, when I checked in this morning from Salt Lake City, I finished my report. The boss assigned me to work with you. Hey, that's fine. Well, there's plenty of work for both of us to do. Oh, what's the story? It's a theft from an interstate shipment. Done with the boat? That's right. Now, yeah, what was stolen? Over $30,000 worth of silk. Oh. Any clues? No, we can't tell yet. Watchman was slugged, but he may be able to help us. How? Says he got a pretty good look at one of the men in the boat. He's almost certain he can identify that man. And where's the watchman now? He's down at police headquarters looking over pictures. If he finds the man he saw, they'll call us. What's the next step? Well, I've alerted all dock owners to be doubly careful, keep their goods well guarded at night. Uh, any chance of locating the stolen silk? I've already contacted every silk wholesaler in town. No luck, though. Huh? Well, none yet. But they're going to call in if they come across any of the loot. And what do we do now? Well, there's nothing much we can do, Elliot, but wait until we hear from that watchman. Ted! Oh, hi, Hank. Come on, have a drink. You buying? Sure. Okay. Hey, Matt, couple of rides. Where you been? Oh, I went to the boat. Oh, did you get paid? Sure. How much? Huh? How much did Nan give you? Five bills. 
Five hundred? Uh-huh. No wonder she wanted to pay everybody off one at a time. Hey, what are you talking about? I spoke to the other guys. They got a hundred apiece. What? Is that all? Yeah. That's eight hundred for them and five for you. That's thirteen hundred she's paid so far. Out of eight thousand. She told me she only got two thousand. I checked up. She got eight G's in cash. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. She ain't gonna pay me off in the dark. I did a lot of work. I arranged for the trucks to pick up the stuff off the dock. I even arranged for the fence to get rid of it. Well, I guess there's always trouble when you work for a dame. They don't have to be. Not if you handle them right. How much are you gonna ask for? 25%. That's two G's. Ah! (laughs) She won't go for that. Oh, yeah? Come on over with me, I'll show you. I I can't go right now. Why not? I got a date. Look, you go on down to the boat. I'll meet you later. Hi, Jim. Hello, Elliot. Any news from the watchman? Yes, while you were out, police headquarters called. The watchman definitely identified a man named Henry Davis, alias Hank Davis. Uh, What's the record on Davis? I've got it right over here. Here it is. Take a look at it. 23 arrests. Starting, you'll notice, when he was 15. Yeah, I see. One of these arrests was for hijacking. Mm-hmm. That would tie him in with this kind of a job. There's an even stronger tie-in than that down there. Uh, see that arrest back in 34? Uh, it's down to the bottom there. Uh, 34, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Well, what about it? I thought I remembered that job, so I checked up on it. You find anything? Mm-hmm. Along with Davis, the police also arrested a man named Lou Mercer. The one who died last week? Same one. And at that time, Mercer had a gang of river pirates stealing stuff on both sides of the river. Yeah, that is a strong tie in, Jim. Now all I have to do is find Davis. Oh, uh, by the way, you pick up anything down at the docks? No, I spoke to the watchman on the adjoining dock. I didn't see anything. No clues of any kind? Huh? Not a thing. Looks like they must have glided up to the pier with their motors off. They weren't even heard. Yeah, I guess that's the way they would operate. That's oh, excuse me. Sure. Special Agent Taylor. Yes, Sergeant. Oh, you have? That's fine. Oh, uh, wait till I get a pencil and I'll write that down. Give me that pencil, please. Sure. Thanks. Okay, go ahead, Sergeant. 721 Oak Street, room 129. Got it. Yeah. Thanks very much, Sergeant. Something on Davis? Yes, that's the call we've been waiting for. We've got Davis's address. I'm going over there now. Ahoy there! Anybody aboard? Who's there? It's me, Nan, Ted. What do you want, Ted? I was supposed to meet Hank here. Come aboard. Okay. You see Hank? Yes. Came down here. He's very angry. Yeah, I know. He was sore when he left me. Did he tell you what he wanted? Yeah, more dough. And I gotta admit, he had a point there, Nan. Why'd you say that? Well, after all, he did a lot of work. And me did, too. Kid, I got the boat. Yeah, I know. And I lined up the job. Sure, but... Uh, how can you say that you boys did so much work? Well, I should have got more than 500, Nan. After all, you got 8,000 for the stuff. Well, supposing I did, what about it? I want a bigger cut. How much? Same as Hank. You know what he asked for? Yeah, 25%. That's right. Did you give it to him? No. Well, what did Hank do? Tried to use violence. Cuffed me around. What happened? Come over to the cabin. Look there. On the floor. Hank. He looks dead. He should. He is. Turn in just a moment to tonight's case from the files of your FBI. See that happy-looking chap over there? He's a professional worry lifter. You mean he goes around cheering people up, giving them good advice and so on? Oh, he does more than that, Ed. He's a specialist. He lends a sympathetic ear to people in trouble, sure. But he also lends a helping hand. He not only acts... 
but he talks as well. Oh, sounds like a man everybody ought to know. Oh, he is. He's your equitable society representative. If fear about your family's future is destroying your peace of mind, you'll find that your equitable society representative really knows the answers. For instance, right now, you may be doing some unnecessary worrying, simply because you haven't heard of readjustment income. As a matter of fact, I never did hear of it. The Equitable Society's Readjustment Income Plan provides extra income for the widow during the two toughest years, the two years immediately following her husband's death, years in which she is adjusting the family way of life to a lowered income. You know, expenses can't be reduced overnight. It takes time. And that's why every life insurance program should provide readjustment income for extra help during the two toughest years. Say, this readjustment income plan sounds okay to me. Is it expensive? Why, it may not cost you a cent. It may require only a simple rearranging of your present life insurance program. In any event, the man to see is your professional worry lifter, your equitable society representative. Look in the phone book for the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Ambitious Widow. It is not the purpose of tonight's case from the files of your FBI to tell you that the mobs of criminals operating in this country today are being run by women. Nothing could be further from the truth. And yet, women are active participants in the current crime wave. That fact has become more obvious as each year's records are studied. And it is an actual statistic that in the past year... Women were so active that of all arrests made for criminal homicide in the United States, the number of women arrested exceeded 10%. One other fact emerges from a study of that same table of arrested persons, and that is that there is virtually no crime or method of operation too difficult for the lady criminal. Yes, in this field, too, women have definitely proven that they are not the weaker sex. Tonight's file continues in the FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor has just returned from the search of Hank Davis's apartment. Jim, hmm? find anything up at Davis's place? No, not a thing. Any of his neighbors able to help? They wouldn't if they could. That kind of a place. Huh? Mm, that kind. It's one thing that bothers me, though. Oh, what's that? Davis didn't show up all night. I checked this morning before I came in. He couldn't have gotten in the back way, could he? No, no. We've had the building under complete surveillance. Hey, you don't suppose he found out he'd been identified by the watchman, do you? I don't see how he could have. You think he skipped town? No. no. I believe he's still around. Well, what's the next step, Jim? Do we wait for Davis to show up? No. No, on the way in, I asked the file room to send up that copy of Davis's record. Uh-huh. We might get the names of some of his friends from that and start checking on them. Now, if he... I'll get it. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Well, you have? Hmm. Yeah, thanks for calling. We'll be right down. That was the morgue, Gilly. They've just identified a body down there. It's Mr. Hank Davis. Dan! Oh, hi there, Nan! Is that you, Ted? Yeah, okay to come aboard? Come ahead. I thought you might still be sleeping. No. I've been up for hours. Did you get rid of the package? What package? Hank. Oh, yes. Tied some weights on him, dropped him overboard. Well, right here? Surely, why? Suppose he comes up. <laughs> Didn't you ever hear of a current? Oh. <laughs> Dad, stop worrying. Okay. Do any of the other guys know about Hank? No. Well, suppose they find out. Well... They might not like it. Well, I'm afraid they'll have to like it. it teach them that a woman can be efficient, too. Did you call that number I gave you? 
Off of the truck, yeah. He'll be here at six in the morning. Good. I call the rest of the boys. They're ready. Will we go tonight? M- at midnight. Oh, I hope it ain't too soon after the last job. Ted, just let me do the worrying. Come here. I want to show you something. What is it? You'll see. Look under that canvas. Hey, a machine gun. And the way it's mounted, you see, you can swing it to cover any angle. Well, what do you want with a machine gun? Just in case of trouble. Oh. This is going to be your job. The gun? Yes. You stay back here from the time we leave until we get home. Okay. And I don't have to tell you what to do, Ted. If there's trouble, you use it. It's over this way, Elliot. Body is right over here. Um, yeah, here we are. Davis, all right. Mm. Bullet hole in his head. Uh, must have been dead when he hit the water. According to the coroner, he was. Well. Davis's personal effects are over on that table. Let's take a look at them. Huh? Right. Here, yeah, sit here in there. Okay. I guess these are just the papers and money he had on him. Yes. All of his clothes are over there. He wasn't carrying much money, was he? Oh, not for a fellow who just pulled a big job. That key you've got there won't help us. That's the key to his apartment. See the 129 stamped into it? Oh, yeah, that's his room number, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Phone number on this slip of paper. I wonder what this is. Maybe a girl. Could be. Oh, wait a minute. This exchange is in the business district. Elliot, let's get out of here. I'm going to make a phone call. See who belongs to this number. Elliot, I called that number. It was a trucking outfit. Trucking outfit? Mm-hmm. They could have been in on the job. No, I checked up on them down at the office. They're legitimate. Well, what did they have to report? They picked up some crates of silk from the dock at the foot of 14th Street. Yeah, but who paid for the job? Well, they were paid at the warehouse where they delivered the silk. I had the police send a radio patrol car around to the warehouse. Pick anybody up? No, there wasn't anyone at the warehouse, but the silk is there. Hey, the office can find out who owns the warehouse and the tax records. It'll probably turn out to be David. Well, the office is already working on that angle. I, I don't think Davis was the head man, though. Oh, well, why not? Well, the trucking outfit I spoke to said they got another call just about an hour ago. With another order? That's right, to pick up another load tomorrow morning and at the same dock. Well, why don't we go down to the dock pick up whoever's anchored there? Well, the 14th Street Pier is open to the public. There's... Always about a dozen boats tied up down there. Yeah. But I've got an idea. Let's get back to the office and we'll work from there. I know the police will want to join us. On the river that night, there were three large, fast boats manned by special agents of your FBI. Boat number one with special agent Jim Taylor was idling in the middle of the river. Boat number two, with Special Agent Elliot Sheridan aboard, was north of 14th Street. Boat number three was to the south. Special Agent Taylor is talking over the two-way radio to both of the other boats. I see movement aboard a large black boat. There are about ten men aboard. It's now pulling away from the dock. The boat is headed north. Sheridan. Sheridan on boat two. Have you spotted her yet? Yes, Jim. Just picked her up in the glasses. Fine. Now start up the river yourself and stay in front of her. Right. I'll follow her from behind and check with you later. Jim Taylor. Come in, Sheridan. You see what she's doing now, Jim? She's headed in toward a pier. That's right. All right. Stop your motors and stay where you are. We're going to follow her in. Boats two and three. The name on the boat is the Dolphin. It's pulling into Pier 40 now. Come up behind boat number one and give me some cover. The Dolphin is now tied up to the pier. They're starting to load. We can nail them in the act. Let's start to close in. (laughs) 
What is it? How's it going? We've got one more crate to load, and then we're finished. Oh. Ted, why aren't you standing by that gun? I wanted to see how it was going. Well, please get back there. Look, I... Wait. What is it? Here, motors. You boys, quiet a minute. I hear him, too. If there was only a moon, we could see. They're coming closer. Hey, those lights! They're shining right on us! Stand where you are, all of you! Nan, it's cops! Yes. What do we do? Look, there's more than one boat. I know. They got us cut off. Well, they aren't taking us. Huh? Get on that gun. Oh, Nan, look. Do as I say. No dice. They're right on top of us. I'll handle it myself. Oh, oh, no, Nan. Come back here. Nan, they're alongside. Keep up with this boat. Get away from that gun, lady. Jim, look out. Sorry, lady. Let go of me. All right. Elliot, cover the rest of them. I'll bring our lady right over to join you. All members of the hijacking gang were tried and sentenced to serve long terms in the federal penitentiary for larceny from interstate shipments. Nan Mercer was turned over to local authorities to be placed on trial for murder. And thus, another band of criminals was broken up by the cooperative efforts of local police who supplied the launches and of your FBI. Everywhere across America, that kind of cooperation is taking place. And as in tonight's case, Every means of communication and transportation is being used to narrow the circle around the criminal and to keep narrowing it until he is trapped, arrested, and convicted. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Just one second, Mr. Keating. I want to check and see if I'm on the beam about the Equitable Society's readjustment income plan. My understanding is that this plan would give my wife extra income during the first two years after my death. You've got it straight, Ed. Extra cash every month for two years to give her time to adjust her expenses to a new standard of living. Sounds like a mighty fine idea to me. Then let me suggest that you get in touch with your Equitable Society representative without delay. Let him show you how little it costs to provide your wife with equitable readjustment income. Call your equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The diamond-studded double cross. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The diamond-studded double cross on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>